pemirsa My TV, apa kabar? Selamat datang di episode perdana She Magazine Sharing and Empowering Produksi VOA di Washington DC Bareng saya, Vina Muptadi Dan saya Ian Umar, selamat atas pengudaranya My TV Semoga bisa memberikan pilihan tontonan yang menghibur dan menginspirasi Siap Ian? Oh siap Oke, okay, kalau gitu untuk memulai episode perdana She Magazine Here are some uplifting stories to start your day Dalam penghargaan iHeart Radio Music Awards di Los Angeles bulan Maret mendatang, penyanyi Agnes Mo akan bersaing dengan sembilan artis mancanegara untuk memperbutkan penghargaan social star yang pemenangnya ditentukan lewat voting. Good luck Agnes Mo! Dan in the meantime, Meghan Markle, anggota kerajaan Inggris yang lagi hamil tujuh bulan ini, telah memilih beberapa yayasan amal yang didukungnya, yang bertujuan memajukan seni, memberdayakan perempuan, mendukung pendidikan anak perempuan, dan dan juga mensejahterakan hewan. Sementara itu, beberapa penyanyi Indonesia meramaikan sebuah acara bernama Indonesian Night di Fontana, negara bagian California, belum lama ini. Inul Daratista, Nia Daniati, serta Hetikus Endang, dan putrinya Afifah Yusuf tampil menghibur diaspora Indonesia yang tinggal di California Selatan. Sejumlah perancang busana Indonesia dijadwalkan menggelar koleksi mereka di New York Fashion Week bulan ini, termasuk yang akan hadir adalah Itang Yunas, Ferenc Supandi, dan Dian Pelangi. Waduh, New York Fashion Week itu memang banyak sekali ya uh, peserta-pesertanya atau desainer dari Indonesia yang sudah ikutan udah jadi rutin ya kan ya? Betul sekali lain itu nih kita ngobrol soal perempuan mm-hmm. ya. Kemarin itu juga ada acara uh, pegelaran aksi gede-gedean. Oh, Women's March. Betul sekali, Women's March. Nah, ini kan pertama kali diadakan tanggal, oh, bukan tanggal ya, tahun, tahun. 2017. Ya, masih ingat nggak sih waktu itu tuh satu hari setelah inaugurasinya Donald Trump, rame banget bisa dikatakan ratusan ribu bahkan jutaan, jutaan orang. Jutaan katanya. Kalau dijumlahin uh, seluruh dunia ya. Nah, ini berlangsung lagi Vina, tanggal hmm. 19 kemarin. Ada reporter She Magazine, Gandira Pratama, yang menemui sejumlah peserta aksi dan mencari tahu apa saja. aja isu-isu mereka yang disuarakan tahun ini. Hari Sabtu 19 Januari lalu, untuk ketiga kalinya digelar pawai perempuan atau Women's March yang pertama kali diselenggarakan tahun 2017 sejak pelantikan Presiden Amerika Donald Trump. Aksi protes ini punya pesan tertentu. Hari ini di Washington DC cuacanya dingin sekali, tetapi jangan khawatir karena semangat para orang-orang di sini itu sangat kuat. Kenapa? Karena hari ini ada Women's Smart yaitu pawai untuk hak-hak wanita. Dan orang-orang di sini yang berjuang untuk hak-hak wanita akan berjalan dari Federal Triangle sampai nanti ke Capitol Hill. Pawai protes ini berlangsung di 600 lokasi di Amerika dan di seluruh dunia termasuk ibu kota Washington DC. There's so many people, so many women supporting other women and men out here also supporting women so it's great. Ribuan orang yang membawa berbagai poster ini berkumpul di Jalan Constitution Avenue untuk memperjuangkan hak-hak perempuan. Rombongan kemudian berjalan menuju gedung Capitol dan jalan-jalan utama. Protes ini tidak hanya menyuarakan isu persamaan gender, tapi juga mendorong isu lainnya, seperti kesehatan perempuan, lingkungan, hak-hak migran, hingga isu kontroversi pengadilan wilayah perbatasan oleh Presiden Trump. You can have support. Um, I guess one of the challenges with that is, as much as there's also support, there's always going to be resistance of people on the opposite side. So that's one of the challenges in the, the Twitter and, and hashtag movements now. Meskipun anggota Kongres Amerika perempuan yang terpilih dalam pemilu paru waktu akhir tahun 2019 berhasil mencapai rekor baru, menurut peserta pawai, masih ada banyak isu lain yang harus ditangani. Me personally, like women in the workplace, that's a big thing. Um, I definitely say it's a big, um, something I want to change, women in the workplace. Equal pay, equal opportunity. I hope that it will help raise awareness of some of the inequalities. I hope that it will help our government see that there's still people out here that want to see change happen that there's a lot of people and it's people from all different backgrounds and, and we're all here supporting the single cause and that's equality so I, i hope that it will help push our government to make some changes and and look out for everyone's rights Thank you Gandira Pratama buat laporannya. Tadi kita lihat ya masanya cukup besar banyak. Tapi sebenarnya kalau dibandingin sama yang pertama itu jauh berkurang ya. 
waktu itu kan ratusan ribu, jutaan bahkan, tapi sekarang mungkin bisa dikatakan ribuan jumlahnya. Hmm. Dan ini berpengaruh kepada pemilu paruh waktu kemarin di Amerika tahun 2018 kemarin. Karena tanggal 6 November lalu, peserta yang menjadikan atau menja mencalonkan diri yeah. itu banyak dari kaum perempuan dan banyak yang maju dan masuk. Betul sekali. Dan tentunya pemirsa rekor ini juga terbentuk berkat peran berbagai organisasi dan LSM seperti yang ini nih, Boat Run Lead yang melatih perempuan di level akar rumput. My name is Erin Velardi and I'm the founder and CEO of Vote Run Lead. I always wanted to work on women and power. Being subscribed to Ms. Magazine in the seventh grade, I had a window into the fight that women were fighting, but it always felt that it was under the frame uh, around women as victims. You know, how do we end domestic violence? How do we close the pay gap? How do we look at the different disparities between women and to make things more fair? And what I always believed that if women were in charge, the world would be a better place. My senior year of college, I was looking for an internship. The White House Project was one of the first cross women's leadership organizations. They were introducing the idea of women as leaders. And I have taken that with me in launching Vote Run Lead as a very young woman and went from intern to vice president by the time I was finished. Vote Run Lead trains women to run for office and win. So many people told us those women will never run. Those women will never be viable. Gay women, poor women, um, communities of color, you know, activist women. And now we see them running for office, winning public office, and doing some fantastic innovative things at the local and state level. Probably one of the proudest moments was the uh, Minnesota State primary for uh, District 60B, in which Ilhan Omar became the first Somali-American Muslim person um, to win an election. She's the highest ranking Somali elected official in the country. She's a refugee, she's a mom of three. She is really embodying that leadership style of bringing the community along, of leaving and cutting a wider path behind you. What we're teaching is you are enough. You have the skills, you have the talent, you have the networks. Understanding that it's within you, you can channel it, you can put it in the right direction, and actually the world is desperately waiting for your leadership. We know at Vote Run Lead that one woman will never be representative of the you know, millions of women in this country. That actually it comes from the ground up. And so that's Vote Run Lead's contribution, is making sure that groundswell of women have the resources to know how to run, have women who look like them teaching the courses. I think, honestly, the women of Vote Run Lead are what make people hopeful about the future. Yay, go women ya. Dan sepertinya akan ada rekor baru di Amerika karena sudah ada sedikitnya empat politisi perempuan yang mengumumkan akan mencalonkan diri sebagai presiden Amerika, yaitu Kirsten Gillibrand, Elizabeth Warren, Tulsi Gabbard, dan yeah. yang terakhir adalah Kamala, Kamala Harris. Harris. We have more empowering stories coming up only on She Magazine. Stay tuned.